Hi there. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Sandra and you're watching The Schwoven's Nest. Before we get started, I wanted to share with you the unboxing or opening of a craft item that I purchased for myself, which is going to change the game completely. I broke down and purchased the Vintage Market Iron Orchid Molds. I am in love. I've used them already and I'm so excited to share with you what I did with them and how they turned out and how easy they are to work with. I already tested one out and I did the pig and now I'm going to show you how I do the sheep. I'm using cornstarch which is the recommended product to use to dust inside the mold and make sure that there aren't any sticky parts so the clay can fall out really easily. Now I ended up putting quite a bit on so I just shake it over my garbage can and tap off any of the excess and I'm still left with a good amount inside the mold. I purchased the clay that I'm using at Michael's and I got it for 30% off. That's the coupons that we get. So I thought it would be a good buy. It was $18 and then 30% off, especially for my first try at this. If this clay doesn't work out very well, then I'll definitely be looking into getting some other clay and eventually I will probably try the IOD clay as well. I'm just massaging it and making it kind of the shape of my sheep and then I'm just going to go ahead and push it right into the mold. Now it was a little bit tricky getting the hang of it. I know I've watched a few people do this with these molds so I was just very patient with myself pushing it in using my fingers and my thumb here to just cut off the excess around the edges. I've used different types of molds as well and I just love having that little micro rim around the edge that really helps you get a nice clean cut with your molds. So I think this was one of the best investments that I've made and I will probably look into getting a few more of their molds too. This video is not sponsored just in case you're wondering. Once I had the whole form of the sheep filled in, I just made sure that it was nice and flat for some reason, and maybe it's the type of clay, I was getting some finger indentation. So I'm just gonna smooth it across and make sure that it's a nice flat surface before I release it from the mold. This is the best part, taking the clay out of the mold and looking at how easy it comes out. You literally just bend the mold a little bit and it starts to fall out. When I get to the legs, I just take my time and do it very slowly and it's perfect. I am in love. I am so happy that I finally took the plunge. I'm going to use my weld bond glue to glue it onto the mail holder first and then I'll end up doing all of my painting. The reason I'm using the weld bond glue is number one, it's a permanent hold. It glues absolutely anything in the world together and it's really easy to spread apart. The first time I did this, I used the Gorilla Clear Grip glue and that was on the pig. It held really well, but I really struggled trying to spread it out because it's just so thick. So this was a much better and easier way to get the glue on. I placed it down very gently exactly where I needed it to be, although with the weld bond glue you do have some time to adjust it if you need to. I'm just very gently patting it down and then I'm going to go around all of the edges and make sure that it's really pushed down nice and securely. So I'm lifting it up and taking a look and making sure that all of the edges are pressed in. You can see I'm just doing it very gently with my thumb but that's just just going to prevent any gaps from staying there and it dried really great. I'm really really pleased with how this is all turning out. The color I'm using to paint all of the wood on this piece, not the sheep, is called mushroom and it is a color that I love. It almost has the look of crockery so I really like that look and it's called mushroom. It's a color that is in the majority of my home. I had some left over so I've been using it for crafting and it's turning into my favorite color besides white. I'm going to give this a couple of coats and let it dry really well. 
While I wait for the first coat to dry for the wood, I'm just taking some white chalk paint and giving the clay sheep a really light coat. I forgot to mention these have dried for overnight a good 24 hours before I did anything with them and I got no shrinkage. I didn't get any cracking so I'm really pleased with how this clay is working out. I'll have a link to that clay down in my description box too. The two coats of paint are dry on the wood but now I decided to just do a little bit of a darkening not by much for the sheep. So what I did is take some clear wax and this is Folk Art Home Decor Clear Wax. I added a tiny little bit of the mushroom paint and I'm just going over the sheep very lightly just to give him a little bit more dimension. So he's just not a stark white and he blends in a little bit better with the color of the box. I really love how this turned out and I know I'm saying that tons and tons in my video today but I do really love how these clay pieces are turning out. I'm using some heavy grit sandpaper. I believe this is an 80 grit because I want to be able to make quick work of getting down to the wood. So I've got two coats of paint. I'm going to really get down to the wood especially on the corners you can see here I hit that one really hard I want a lot of that wood to show through I want this to look really old and used I wanted to finish this off with some florals instead of leaving it a usable piece. I just thought it would look so pretty with some blooms in it. So I'm just taking some of this wet floral foam. I did pick this up at the thrift store. I like to use this when I'm trying to wedge it into small spaces like this because you can break it really easily and just push it in wherever you need it to be. Squish it down and it just stays put. To camouflage the foam, I'm just using little bits of reindeer moss. I pick this up at the Dollar Tree all the time and I really love it. It's probably my favorite moss to use. I do like Spanish moss, but sometimes that can get really messy and I just don't like the dust that it creates. What I'm doing here now is just cutting down a couple of pieces of wire. I'm going to bend them into a U shape and then use them as pins to hold the moss in place. That that's one of the reasons why I enjoy using the soft floral foam because you can easily just pin things in place. I bet you thought that I was going to use lavender and that's what I usually go to. However, the last time I was at Michael's, I found a whole bunch of these beautiful blue blossoms and I thought that would go really well with the crockery look instead of the purple. So I'm just cutting my stems down to size. I'm going to put three at the back a little taller and then three at the front a little bit shorter. I found some dark blue and white gingham ribbon in my stash. I'm just going to wrap it around a couple of times and then tie a simple shoestring bow. This is beautiful. I know I've said that before too, but I really, really like how this one turned out. You'll have to let me know what you think. As I mentioned earlier, I had already done the pig. I put him on this napkin holder and I'm going to be giving it a couple of coats of white chalk paint to start. I painted around the clay pig at first because I was going to be doing him a different color, but then I decided that I liked the look of him sort of monochromatic. I liked just having the white on white. So I am going to give him just one coat of the white chalk paint. You could definitely leave him completely white. I think it looks amazing on top of this, but I'm going to use the same wax with the little bit of mushroom paint in it just to give him a little bit more of a pop. I didn't want him to stick out really a lot, but I did want him to be a little bit of contrast to the white, and I think it turned out perfect. 
just like the first piece I'm going to hit it hard with the sandpaper going around the edges and the corners and making sure that I get right down to that wood. I want this to look old and weathered and rustic. I don't show this very much in my videos, but when I'm done with my pieces, I always give them a couple of spray coats of Rust-Oleum two-in-one clear matte finish. And that is just a really good protector. I like how it works. It's non-yellowing and it's perfect because I can get in all the little nooks and crannies really quickly. Let me know what you think of my little piggy napkin holder. For my last project, I'm going to be using the two sheaves of wheat that are underneath the cow. Again, using the cornstarch to just make sure that everything is nice and coated and tapping off the excess. I'm going to go ahead and use the clay again and fit it into the mold. This is now the third time I'm using the clay with the molds and I'm getting the hang of it. I'm starting to not press too far into the center, but making sure most of my pressure is on the exterior along the micro rim to make sure that I get all of that excess clay off. I was a little more nervous taking out these smaller pieces than I was the big ones just because they're so delicate but this first one came out fairly easily you can see that I'm just being very gentle when I pull it down at the bottom for that little frond there the second one not so much I did lose the little bottom piece on the second one even though I was just as careful so I'm not sure what I did there if maybe it didn't have enough of the cornstarch. This was an easy fix though. All I needed to do was just make the first one look like the second one. Again, I'm using the weld bond glue because it's going to be a permanent hold and it's really easy to spread around. I let these all dry overnight, 24 hours, as I mentioned earlier, and there was no lifting, no cracking. It all turned out perfect. I found this old flour sifter at the thrift store, so I thought these little wheat sheaves would be perfect to put on as embellishment. I'm going to just place one on either side of the name and just press them gently in place, making sure that I get all the edges down just like I did for the sheep. I wanted this sifter to be nice and bright, so I'm giving it a couple of coats of white chalk paint, except I'm going to leave the top and bottom rims the way they are. I'm also going to be painting the clay pieces white, but I'm not going to do the little sticky part of the handle on this side or the handle on the other side. I'm going to leave those original. I'm going to pull in a little bit of green. You can see the little wooden knob on the turn handle is green. So I added a little bit of sage green to the white and mushroom wax mixture. And it's just gonna give the subtlest hint of green. I'm gonna put it on and then I'm just going to dab it off with a tissue because I just want it to be a tiny little hint of green. Then I decided to actually go over the letters and do all the way around that whole section of the sifter. I added just a light coat like you see me doing here and then I took the tissue and just gently dabbed it making sure to get rid of all the brush strokes. I really like how this one turned out. I wasn't quite sure when I was started adding the green but I think just that subtle hint of color makes it look really nice.
Thank you so much for spending some of your time today with me. If you like what you saw, I would love it if you could give me a thumbs up. That gets me noticed more on YouTube and also lets me know that you like my content. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. You don't want to miss out on what I've got in store for you next. Bye for now.